Thank you, Jeff. Let's talk about nitrogen now and whether top dressing is right for your crop. Our Dave Deacon heads out west to Major County to explain. We are 15 miles west of Oriana on Highway 412. Uh, we have a duster wheat. I planted it at a 75 pound. I used 15 or 50 pound of uh, 1846 in the row as a starter. And then we have our uh, enriched strip out here of about 300 actual pounds of nitrogen. It took two to three hours, maybe. We just went and got a spreader from the local co-op and got uh, two tons of nitrogen and went and did a thousand acres in two hours. I mean, just easy as that. That investment of two tons and two hours is going to pay dividends for Drake. Our soil test showed sufficient on a, uh, when we took them back in September. Everything said sufficient. We didn't need any nitrogen for 40 bushel wheat. Well, our enriched strips are showing different. I asked soil nutrient management specialist Brian Arnall to explain what happened to all that nitrogen. Typically during harvest, we have, we're fighting rains. We're going around rain bursts, rain clouds, and as soon as the combines are out of the field, the straw can start breaking down. When straw breaks down, it ties up nitrogen, and it's later released in March and in April, and we get that back. Well, this year we had no wet, we had no soil moisture. The straw didn't break down. The straw didn't tie up residual nitrogen. We finally get our rains in October. We're still warm. The soils are warm, and and, and our, uh, the uh, microbial breakdown just really kicks into gear. And now we're seeing fields that may have had 60 pounds of nitrate showed up in soil test in August have 10 pounds in November. So, so this year it's been it's been especially important for the sensing. This year we've we've seen huge savings. Uh, typically, I like to say saving a producer 10 10 dollars per acre either in saving nitrogen or increasing grain. I think this year we can see much higher returns. Producers are cutting nitrogen rates by 30 to 40 pounds or seeing increase in yield by increasing nitrogen rate by 10 bushel or better. Normally I'll go put out, you know, 50, 60 pound. Some fields they only needed 25 pounds, but then there's others that needed 40 to 45 pounds. And so I was just glad to be able to go across and make the uh, adjustments accordingly. And that's an option Brett Reese wishes he had. So this year I didn't get one in and I'm regretting that I didn't. Why? Because I have had moisture now for a crop and don't quite know where I ought to be on my end. Brett normally uses an enriched strip, but expecting another dry year, he didn't want to take that risk on last fall. You know, in costing like 62 cents a pound and, and trying to put it on with just a shot in the dark, not knowing where you're at, if I can save 10 units on thousands of acres, it adds up fast. And that brings us back to Drake Guards Field, where he and Major County Extension educator Jim Rhodes are sensing the enriched strip with the green seeker. 20 pounds of nitrogen. Really? It's so close. But, okay, we would have just saved you double your money because you yeah, would have come I out here and put, put 40 30, pounds. I probably would have put yeah, 35, 40 pounds. 35, 40 pounds on here. bushel increase with 20 pounds of in. Well, Jim, tell, tell me about what, uh, what you guys have been finding across Major County. Well, this this year while we've been using the green seeker, um, we've been finding that we've uh, some of these some of our producers are uh, anywhere from zero to up to thirty pounds of uh, in. Uh, we've got wheat behind some failed Milo crops. Mm -hmm. I've had questions about how much do we need to top dress on that. Quite honestly, it's a shot in the dark uh, without the green without this uh, green seeker technology. Right. right. People that don't have an enriched strip out there, they're calling to see how much they need to put on, mm -hmm. and uh, without the use of the green seer technology, it's just uh, kind of a, a cowboy agronomics, just yeah. a, a shot in the dark of how much they really need. But um, the green seeker device just answers all those questions for you. And uh, been out, those that do have enriched strips in, we're certainly being able to save them lots of money. So Brian, I think everybody in Oklahoma would agree this has been kind of a warm winter. How's that been affecting things? We've actually seen it put a little bit of a kink in the way we make uh, our recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only a few things needed for center-based recommendation. It's planting date, date that you sensed, and the enriched strip reading and farmer practice reading. So there, there's not a whole lot of input into that. You put those into the calculator and it gives you how many days that crop's been able to grow and the nitrogen rate it recommends. Well, typically during this time of year, we've gone into dormancy. Mm -hmm. Wheat's not growing and we have so many days, 80 to 100 days that the crop could have grown. With our exceptionally, I'm gonna say it's an exceptionally warm winter, right. we haven't really seen the crop going into dormancy. 
we haven't really seen it stop growing. I mean, today we're, we're in Major County. It's, it's the 1st of February, mm -hmm. and it's going to be 70 degrees. Right, right. The wheat is growing today, even yeah. though there was frost on our windows this morning. The calculator may not actually see that as a growing degree day, so we're, we're overestimating yield. Mm -hmm. uh, I've put together an article. It's on the extensionnews.okstate.edu website that explains how we have to uh, increase the number of days on the calculator to make up for this growth that the mesonet calculation is really not capturing. Mm -hmm. And it brings it back down to a realistic agronomic yield potential and some really good end rates for this year. Okay, so, so 2012 has definitely been... 2012 has been a special year. <laughs> so far, Already. and it's only been a month. Okay. Already. Well, Brian, thank you very much. Yeah. And you can find a link to that on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.